Greetings, everyone. I am Sandra Banks, the CEO for the International Dyslexia Association, and I just want to welcome you to another Motivational Monday. We are elated to have you join us today, and we have a very exciting presentation that we want to offer you today. As always, before we begin, I would like to make a few announcements and answer some questions that have been coming our way um, in the in home office. So first and foremost, I wanted to talk about the upcoming webinars that we're going to be having. The next one will be May the 11th, and we will be touching on instructional strategies, which is highly demanded by many of you in the community. So we wanted to make sure we fast forward that and get that going for you. And then our next one will be May 25th, where we will talk about your basic rights and advocacy. So stay tuned for more information on both of those particular webinars that are coming up. Continue to check our website and our e-blast and stay connected with us on Facebook and YouTube as always, and also Instagram. I wanted to make a quick announcement about the giveaways. Um, first and foremost, congratulations to everyone that won great prizes for the last webinar. Um, we were um, excited to give those away, and so we will have another drawing. And similar to the last webinar, we will draw tomorrow. We will notify all of the winners tomorrow, and then we will announce the winners in our next e-blast. So stay tuned for that. Also, I want to remind everyone that we still have the COVID relief fund that is going on in the campaign. Given Tuesday is coming up, and it's a perfect opportunity to support the campaign by giving during Given Tuesday or any time. Again, in, in YouTube, you will find a link right below in the description box. And on Facebook, you should see a donate button. Um, we are really, really trying to help as many families as possible. And again, our goal is not to turn any family away. So please consider giving and give, give, give. And for those of you who have already given, I want to thank you so much for your generosity and for your donations. So please keep those donations coming. So without further ado, I want to get right to the presentation, we have some really, really good information, and we have a wonderful person who is going to be presenting to us today. Uh, Mr. Jamie Martin is an assistive technology specialist at New England Assistive Technology in Hartford, Connecticut. He specializes in assistive technology for dyslexia um, and other learning disabilities. He works with school districts throughout Connecticut, providing evaluations, consultations, trainings, and professional development. Um, in addition, Jamie is a consultant for Understood, which is another great resource for those who learn and think differently. So without further ado, I want to turn this over to Jamie. Jamie, welcome, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this presentation. It's certainly my pleasure, Zanja. Um, so I thank you, and I thank the IDA for having me do this webinar. Uh, let's see. All right. So I've done a lot of work with the IDA in the past. Uh, so I was really excited to come back uh, during kind of these challenging times to, to help all of you uh, learn about assistive technology, uh, but kind of from a different angle. Um, the angle we're looking at at this time is um, what to do at a home, um, because we've all been used to uh, trying to implement assistive technology and use it to help our students with dyslexia while they're in school. Uh, but now we're in an all new, totally different ball game. Um, what do you do in your house? Uh, both from a, a parent standpoint and from a teacher standpoint. Uh, so that's what we hope to accomplish today. Uh, so the presentation today is actually going to be in two different parts. Um, if you watched last week's webinar, actually two weeks ago uh, with Margie Gillis, um, you know, it's kind of the same format. So um, I'll be giving you uh, some useful information for about the first 20 minutes or so. And then the second part, we're gonna switch over to a question and answer period. So um, for those of you who registered for this webinar, you submitted all of your questions. We got tons of questions for this webinar. Um, I chose uh, 
The questions I think are gonna be applicable to the most number of people. And we're gonna take a look at those. And while I'm answering those questions, um, hopefully I'm gonna do some live demonstrations to show you how uh, particular tools work um, for different platforms as well. Uh, so that's the, the format of today. And we're gonna get started with the first part. And what I'm calling this first part is my AT first aid kit. So if you kind of feel like my little bit emoji there, throwing your hands up in the air, not quite knowing what to do uh, during distance learning, uh, especially when it comes to assistive technology, what I've done is put together a group of AT tools that I think are indispensable during this kind of, of home distance kind of learning. Um, there's a lot more you know, assistive technology tools in the, the bigger AT world, uh, but the, what I'm gonna show you today um, are tools I think would be really good to help you get your kids started or help you get your students started um, with using assistive technology for activities that involve reading and writing, um, especially when uh, they're getting you know, those activities either digitally or on paper, maybe sent home from the school. So there's a little QR code here on the screen, um, if you haven't taken it already. Uh, this will give you a free PDF copy of my AT First Aid Kit. So I'm not gonna linger too long on this slide because you can go back and watch this presentation again uh, on YouTube afterwards. And you can just hit the pause button as many times as you need to uh, to get all the information. Uh, but that's a shortened URL code, or shortened URL address plus a QR code that you can get a copy and download a copy of uh, this first aid kit. So there's four different sections of my AT first aid kit. Uh, the first section is the built-in accessibility features of any device that you're using. So whether you're using a Chromebook or an iPad or a Windows computer, um, even a Mac desktop computer, all of those operating systems have built-in accessibility tools for reading and writing. So they can really help out your kids with dyslexia. And rather than, uh, you know, in these difficult times, rather than going off and trying to find uh, a new tool to use, download it from the app store, figure out how to use it, it's always a great place to start by looking at what you already have. And what you already have are these built-in tools of the operating system. So we're gonna review those in a minute. And then we're going to move on to Bookshare. Um, if there's nothing else that you, you do for your kids with dyslexia during uh, these times of distance learning, at the very least, you should get them a Bookshare account if they don't already have one. We'll talk more about Bookshare in a couple of minutes, uh, but this is a really a key piece of assistive technology uh, that you should be tapping into at this point. We're also going to talk about optical character recognition. Uh, or, or OCR for short. Um, so basically what this is going to help you do is take those paper packets that are being sent home from school. And I know there are districts in the country who um, have done that, who have sent home a packet of work to do that's on paper. The OCR tools are gonna make that work accessible to your kids who might have difficulty reading uh, the directions and the answers and then giving their, their responses. Uh, so that's another key part of the AT first aid kit. And then finally, we're gonna talk about uh, AT tools that have been made free during distance learning. Um, fortunately, a lot of the major AT vendors, the AT developers have uh, made their tools free to use during distance learning. Uh, we'll talk about specifically what kinds of tools uh, those are in a couple of minutes. So that's another thing that you can tap into um, while you're trying to figure out what's going on here at home. So I'm gonna start with the built-in accessibility features of whatever device you're working on. Uh, that might be Chrome OS. So if you, your kids are using a Chromebook, the operating system is called Chrome OS and there are built-in features there. If your student or child is using an iOS device or an iPad OS device, like an iPhone or an iPad, or even an iPod Touch. Uh, there are some accessibility features in those operating systems. 
if your child or student is using a Windows computer, uh, maybe you're not a Google school, uh, maybe you use 365 and you have Windows tablets, uh, maybe a Surface tablet, something like that. There are built-in uh, accessibility features uh, for kids with dyslexia inside Windows 10 as well. And finally, if your student or child is using a Mac computer, uh, that operates on Mac OS and the latest version is called Catalina. Um, and there are reading and writing tools built in to that operating system as well. So first operating system, uh, perhaps the most common uh, platform in schools, at least in the United States at this point, um, is the built-in features on a Chromebook. Uh, the operating system on a Chromebook is called Chrome OS. Um, if you would like to learn more after I'm done speaking about the built-in accessibility on Chrome OS, you can follow that shortened URL address or use that little QR code there uh, to get more information. So there's a little bit of homework involved with this AT first aid kit. Uh, but I'm trying to give you as many resources today as I possibly can. Uh, then you can go off and do a little more research on your own afterwards. Uh, so what's built into Chrome OS? So on your Chromebook, we all know that uh, there are extensions in Chrome, right? Um, however, there's built-in tools right in the operating system uh, that you can use for reading and writing. There's built-in text-to-speech on a Chromebook. It's called Select to Speak. Um, there's also built-in dictation on a Chromebook. I'm sure at this point, some of your kids um, or students have used something like Google voice typing and Google Docs um, <clears throat> on their Chromebook. That's dictation technology. And that's great for, for Google Docs. Um, however, they might be doing some work on their Chromebook um, that does not involve Google Docs. And then you don't have that tool available. Fortunately, there's built-in dictation on the Chromebook uh, that you, you're, they can use um, to convert their spoken words into transcribed text onto the screen. And then finally, there's word prediction also built into uh, a Chromebook. Um, it's actually in the on-screen keyboard. So if your child has a, uh, a Chromebook with a touch screen and they bring up the on-screen keyboard, you'll see the word prediction across the top of the the keyboard right on the, on the screen. If your child is using a Chromebook that's not touchscreen, you can still use the on-screen keyboard with the word prediction and you can kind of shrink it up and put it over to the side and still have that word prediction uh, support right there. So if you like to, like to learn more about how to use any of these uh, built-in accessibility tools inside Chrome OS, uh, please follow that link right there on the screen and the, it'll walk you through how to set up any of these features and how to actually use them. On an iPad or on a, an iPhone, um, there's really good built-in accessibility. Apple has done a really nice job um, over the last five to 10 years in building in accessibility features in their operating systems, particularly on mobile devices like an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, there's a link there for more information, but let me review what's available there. There is built-in text-to-speech, and there's actually three options at this point. Uh, they just added a third option in uh, iOS 13. So there's speak selection, speak screen, uh, and speak on touch. And they all do slightly different things uh, depending on what the particular um, task involves and what kind of, of text-to-speech support um, a student needs. There's also built-in dictation. I think at this point, uh, most people have seen the built-in dictation on a mobile device. It's that little microphone button right next to the space bar, usually. And you use that to write with your voice. And finally, there's built-in word prediction on Apple devices. And Apple actually calls that quick type. Um, and that's the, the word prediction above the, the on-screen keyboard there. Can help with things like spelling and word recall, something like that. If you would like to learn more about those features and how to use them, please follow that link. Windows, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Microsoft has done a really nice job over the last few years in improving the accessibility of Windows 10. 
Uh, you have that, that little link there for, to do a little more homework on that. Uh, but they have added a really easy to use dictation tool. Uh, Windows 10 has had built in dictation for quite a while, uh, but it hasn't always been simple to use. Um, in Windows 10, they added a really easy to use option. Um, I'll give you a little preview um, so you don't have to follow that link. But if you want to use the dictation on a Windows computer, you touch and hold the Windows key and at the same time type the H key in the middle of the keyboard and that will bring up a little dictation uh, floating toolbar that you can use to write with your voice on a Windows computer. There's also built-in word prediction now in Windows 10. Um, and mostly that's gonna work well with Windows software or Microsoft software. So Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, um, there's built-in word prediction inside of the operating system uh, so that you can type using the, the keyboard on the computer and you'll get some word prediction choices up here on the screen. Um, and the last one is not really built into Windows 10. It's more part of Windows software. It's, it's embedded inside of things like uh, Microsoft Word or OneNote, um, even the Edge browser at this point. Uh, that's the learning tools or sometimes uh, it's referred to as the immersive reader. So the immersive reader does a really nice job, especially for, for kids with dyslexia in providing text-to-speech support. Uh, it will divide words into syllables to help with decoding. Uh, you can um, identify parts of speech. Uh, you can, there's a picture dictionary um, included to help you with, with comprehension. Uh, so if you have a piece of Microsoft software, at this point, the immersive reader is probably there somewhere. Uh, usually you would find it in the view drop-down menu in whatever software that you're in. But if you want more information about that or about the dictation or the word prediction, uh, please use this link and you can find more information there. And finally, if you're using a Mac desktop computer, uh, the, a Mac OS device, uh, there is built-in accessibility. There's built-in text-to-speech on a Mac desktop computer also built-in dictation, and there's word prediction as well, but that usually only works with Apple software. Um, not surprising, right? Uh, so if you would like to learn how to use any of those accessibility features on a Mac computer, you can follow that link on the screen and get more information there. Okay, so the next section of the AT First Aid Kit is Bookshare. So if you've never used Bookshare, if you've never heard of Bookshare, uh, when we're done with this webinar, go to their website, www.bookshare.org. Bookshare is a government funded program in the US. Um, a little bit later on, uh, we'll talk about our folks in Canada and what you can do uh, to get free access to eBooks. Uh, but for US citizens, uh, Bookshare is a government funded program um, for people with print disabilities. So it could be a vision disability, but it can also be a learning disability like dyslexia. Um, as long as you provide proof of your disability, you have free access to over 800,000 books um, in electronic format. Uh, so definitely go to their, their website, take a look. Uh, if you're a teacher, you can sign up your school for a school account, and then you can administer uh, individual accounts among your students. If you're just a family looking for a resource for electronic books, you can get an individual account uh, and your student can uh, get all the books they want from the Bookshare library. Again, of over 800,000 books. That includes textbooks, bestsellers, novels, nonfiction, all kinds of books um, that are made available electronically. Because they're electronic and they're not pre-recorded audiobooks, you do need to use assistive technology to read those eBooks out loud. So a few of my favorite tools for Bookshare books um, are the following. So the first one is called read to go read to go is made by Bookshare, made by their parent company uh, called Benetech, uh, but it's the quote unquote official um, Bookshare app for iOS devices, for Apple devices. That's called Read2Go. Go Read is also made by Bookshare. 
for Android devices. So if you have an Android device and not an Apple device, you're going to look for Go Read in the Google Play Store, and that's the app you're going to use. Both of those will connect directly to Bookshare. You just sign into your account, and you can start downloading books and reading them with text-to-speech and other reading tools inside of those apps. Um, perhaps a more full-featured app um, is a free one called Dolphin Easy Reader. And this is available for both Apple devices and Android devices. And like I said, it's free to use. Um, you can read lots of different material other than Bookshare with Dolphin, but you can certainly sync up your Bookshare account um, with this app. And it's a very good app. Um, so a good place to start if you don't want to spend a lot of money or any money at all for that case, <laughs> since it's free. Um, however, if you're looking for even more features, um, including some note-taking tools, Voice Dream Reader is one of my very favorite reading tools, and um, it works really nicely with Bookshare. So you can sign in with your Bookshare account inside Voice Dream Reader, and you'll have lots of options there. I think I'm actually going to show you book, uh, Voice Dream Reader a little bit later uh, for one of the Q&A questions, so you get a, a chance to see what it actually looks like. Um, that would cost a little bit of money. Um, however, I just got a notification this morning that there's a sale going on during distance learning for Voice Dream Reader. You can actually get a bundle. You get the Voice Dream Reader and the Voice Dream Scanner, which is an OCR tool, which we're going to get to in about two seconds, um, together. So Voice Dream Reader and Voice Dream Scanner for $9.99. So that's a distance learning sale going on with those Voice Dream apps. So definitely Bookshare, um, you need to do it. That's all there is to it. Optical character recognition. So this is the third thing in the AT First Aid Kit. OCR apps are going to allow your kids to be able to read those paper handouts independently. So at this point, we un I understand that kids are home. They may not have paraprofessional support at school or a teacher at school that can help them read their materials that are on paper out loud. And I understand that parents have their own work to do as well. So parents are trying to work from home at the same time as kids are, are going to school from home. So in order to help those kids be a little more independent in reading those paper materials, those hard copy text materials, um, it's a really good idea to get started using an OCR app. And you can get this for an iPod touch or a mobile phone, you know, if you already have one of those in the house. But you can also certainly use them for an iPad as well. Uh, if you would like to learn more about OCR technology, you can go to this understood article. Uh, so Sanja was uh, kind enough to mention my work with understood at the beginning. Uh, this is a, I didn't write this particular article, but uh, it's a very good article for understanding OCR. Um, if you aren't familiar with it, basically, um, it allows you to take a picture of text that's on paper, maybe something like this. So you're just going to take your phone or, or your iPad, just drop my phone on the phone on the floor. Give me one second. So you take your phone, you open the app, you just take a picture of it, and then the app will convert that text, the picture of that text, into electronic text that you can have read out loud with text to speech. So it can really help kids be more independent with uh, the reading of those, uh, those paper handouts again. So here are a few options for those OCR apps that are very good. One is called Prismo Go. Uh, Prismo Go, I think, is free to use for the basic features. You can download that for free. Uh, point and shoot, it'll read the text out loud. I think there's a little bit of highlighting in there, so it'll show you where um, it will highlight the words as it's reading it out loud. So you can follow along as you're hearing it. Claro PDF Pro is another very good one. Uh, this has a few more features uh, than Prismo Go. Uh, you do have to pay for this one. It's not that much, it's around $10, I think. Uh, but Claro PDF Pro also has annotation tools. Uh, so if your kids have worksheets on paper, they can use Claro PDF Pro to take a picture of it, have the directions and the questions read out loud, and then use the annotation tools to provide their answers. 
using things like dictation or word prediction. So that's a really good one, particularly for, for worksheets. Um, if you're, again, if you're a Windows user instead of an iPad user, um, Office Lens is a very good OCR app and it integrates very nicely with all of the Microsoft software. Uh, so you can snap a picture of, of a paper handout. It'll do the conversion so it can be read out loud. That immersive reader tool that I was talking about earlier is also built into Office Lens. Uh, but you can also save that image or that converted document as a Word document um, in the cloud and then open it up on your computer and work on that document inside of Microsoft Word um, using your computer. Uh, so very good and it's free, uh, which is a bonus. And then finally, one of the most um, easy to use OCR tools um, is one I mentioned a couple of minutes ago called Voice Dream Scanner. So this is made by the same people as Voice Dream Reader. It's point and shoot. Uh, it'll convert the document automatically. Um, and then you can either save it to Voice Dream Reader. You can have it read out loud in the app. You can also even save it as a PDF document and upload it to Google Drive if your students are using uh, Google Classroom um, during distance learning. I'm gonna show you an example of that a little bit later. We had a really good question come in um, about that particular um, task. So we'll show you how to use Voice Dream Scanner uh, for that kind of work. So that, that's the OCR apps. Find one of those, get started with that. And then finally, I just want to make you aware that there are several AT tools that have been made free um, during distance learning. And these are all the big ones. So all the big companies uh, that make assistive technology tools have provided their tools for free right now, which is very generous of them. Um, it's gonna help a lot of kids get started using their tools uh, when they really need it the most while they're at home. So Crick Software who makes Clicker and Docs Plus um, has made both of those tools free to use during distance learning. Uh, they're both full featured uh, word processing tools, uh, dictation, word prediction, all, kind of, all kinds of, of great stuff there. Uh, Clicker is for younger students, Docs Plus is for older students. Read and Write, so Text Help, who makes Read and Write, has made Read and Write free during distance learning. Um, I should point out that Read and Write is free for teachers all the time. Uh, so if you're a teacher watching this and you get access to Read and Write, you'll keep that forever. Uh, but students who are gaining free access to Read and Write can use it for free now, um, and you can kind of see how it works um, and perhaps you can get your school to purchase it for your student um, later on when we get back into the buildings again. Uh, but Read and Write is available for lots of different platforms, iPad, uh, Chrome, desktop, and it's all free right now. And Kurzweil is also free right now. So Kurzweil is one of those pieces of desktop software that is very, very expensive. Um, I haven't looked up the price recently, but it's very expensive. Now is a really good time if you've been interested in Kurzweil 3000 to take a look at it because they've made it free to use um, for the time being. And then finally, there's three pieces of, of assistive technology made by a company called Don Johnston, uh, Co-Writer Universal, Snap and Read Universal, and WordBank Universal. They are all now free to use during distance learning as well. Co-Writer is a word prediction tool uh, the Chrome version also has dictation built into it. Snap and Read Universal is a reading tool. And WordBank Universal provides um, kind of on-demand uh, word banks uh, for kids who have difficulty with word retrieval and generating ideas for writing, some, you know, stuff like that. So they're all free as well. So all of these really fantastic tools have been made free. Check out their websites. They'll give you more information there. Um, about how to access these tools at no cost while your kids are learning from home. So that's gonna do it for my AT first aid kit. Um, those are the basics. I think those are the things that you should have now um, and should be using now during distance learning. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, we did have lots of questions come in. I think there was close to 400 questions that came in for this webinar. Um, I've kind of whittled it down to around eight to 10 that we can cover next 
um, that are going to go a little more in depth into some of these kinds of assistive technologies that I've been talking about. And I think it's going to be most useful if I actually show you how those work live. So let's get out of the slideshow. And let's take a look at some of these. So the first question that came in was from, let's see, Joanna E. And Joanna E says, uh, what assistive technology do you recommend for assisting fifth graders with the writing process? So thank you, Joanna, for your question. Um, Lots of people ask this question, um, so but I put Joanna's up on the screen. Sorry, everybody else. <laughs> um, so writing the writing process. So we're talking about brainstorming ideas, organizing them in an organized fashion, uh, perhaps putting those ideas into an outline, and then uh, drafting those ideas into a first draft, like a five paragraph essay, uh, perhaps. So I really like, for students with dyslexia, I really like uh, digital or electronic graphic organizers to help with the writing process. And not just for fifth graders. Um, you know, th that just happens to be uh, the, the age group on this particular question. Um, but the, what I'm gonna talk about, you can certainly use um, the, the tools I'm gonna show you next for, for kids all, for all different ages, not just fifth graders. So. Digital graphic organizers. Some people call them mind maps. Some people call them webs. Um, here's an example that you can use for Chromebooks. So if your student is using a Chromebook and things like Google Docs, Google Classroom, they can use a web app called MindMeister. So it's M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R, MindMeister. And it allows you to create digital graphic organizers um, online on those website and do it in a very visual way. I find that kids with, with dyslexia often um, have a much easier time visualizing ideas and organizing ideas in pictures rather than those formal outlines. So maybe I have, maybe Joanna's fifth grader is working on uh, an essay about ice cream. So you can put the main idea in the middle. You can say, I've already started this one. Um, I have three subcategories, toppings, ways to eat ice cream and flavors. And those are gonna be my body paragraphs. And then I've added some details here. So toppings, I've already put whipped cream. But let's say I wanna add a new topping. I can just click the little plus sign. I get a little bubble up here. And maybe I want to add caramel sauce as my next topping in my essay. But I don't know how to, to spell caramel or sauce for that matter. So I'm gonna to need to use some assistive technology here to help me with the spelling. I could use a dictation tool, but I can also use CoWriter. So CoWriter is one of those free Don Johnston tools. I'm gonna to turn that on. You'll see the word prediction come up here on the screen. So there it is. And I want to type in as best as I can, caramel sauce, the C A. R, and then I don't know how to spell the rest of it. That's, I'm trying to encode it, use my phonics skills, but I can only get C-A-R. But if I look in the word prediction box, the first one, Caramel. That's it. So now I can just click on that. Caramel. And I'll put it into the, the box for me. And then I could type the rest of it that way. If I didn't know how to spell sauce, I could use the word prediction as well. Let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then I would move on and, and add details to the rest of this mind map uh, to, to organize my ideas visually. Now, what I really like about uh, the better of these, uh, these digital mind mapping tools is that you can convert automatically the picture of your ideas into a formal outline. So in MindMeister, you come over to the cloud with the down arrow, click on that. This is the export button. I want to export it as a document outline. So I choose that one. And I come down here, click export, choose Google Drive. And it's creating a formal outline and saving it into Google Drive automatically. And so it did that already. So watch this, I'm gonna come over to Google Drive. 
Let's refresh my browser. Here it is, ice cream. It actually popped in there as I was refreshing it. Okay, so here it is. I can open that up. And you can see when it did the conversion, it created the outline automatically. So it started out as the picture over here as the mind map. The MindMeister tool, when it did the, the export, it converted it to an outline automatically. Then at that point, I can click on open with Google Docs, then use all the word processing tools inside Google Docs to finish my draft of my essay. Um, you might want to use things like Google voice typing, uh, something like that. If you want to use dictation, you go back to using CoWriter if you want to. Uh, so you have word prediction in there uh, to help you with that. So MindMeister is a really good mind mapping tool for organizing writing. If you're using an iPad, Inspiration Maps is a really good tool for mind mapping. Um, Inspiration has been around for a long time. Uh, there's a really good version for... Um, for iPads now that you can certainly use. You can use MindMeister on the iPad as well. And there's lots of other options, but the advantage to using a digital graphic organizer is that you can use other uh, AT, like dictation or word prediction, plus they'll convert the, the mind map into the outline automatically, uh, which can really help our kids with that writing process, make it more efficient and make it a lot easier to deal with. So next question is from April W. And April says, what is the best solution for worksheets? I have a first grader and she receives PDFs of worksheets that she is unable to access herself. I can read them to her, but she wants more autonomy in the process. Well, first of all, um, kudos to April's first grader that she wants more autonomy, um, even though um, she's only in first grade. So, um, I'm gonna, she, April says that her first grader gets um, worksheets as PDFs already. Um, so I'm gonna show you a tool to, to use for worksheets with PDFs, um, but let's, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and say, what happens if April's first grader actually gets that worksheet on a piece of paper? Uh, because I know there are some of you who are watching uh, whose kids are in that particular situation. So we'll get back to the PDF in a minute, but let's make a PDF first of all from uh, a piece of paper. So I'm gonna bring up my iPad, so you can see that on the screen. All right, so now you should see my iPad. And we're gonna use an OCR tool for this. So this is one of the things from the AT First Aid Kit. So we're gonna go over to my reading tools this is that voice dream scanner OCR tool. So let's open that. You're gonna see it looks like a, uh, a camera. It's a really nice shot of my power strip on my dining room table. Let's take this out of the case for now. And we'll turn it this way. Okay, so you can see this little worksheet here. Uh, this is actually something a first grader might get to do in school. Uh, it's called sentence worksheet. Um, so we're going to take a picture of this. And you take a picture like you normally would with a little shutter button. All right. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. So this is the picture that's been taken with the voice stream scanner app. I can crop this if I want to with these corner pieces. And then when you're ready to go, you click done over here on the right-hand side. And it did, that's it. So it did the conversion automatically when I click done. You can see all those yellow boxes on there. That's indicating um, that that conversion has been done. It's gonna read um, all of those things in the yellow boxes out loud if I click on this little play button over here. And I can certainly do that inside this app. I can have that read out loud. But let's say I wanna to save this as a PDF and work on it maybe on my Chromebook. So I click on keep 
on the right hand side. I click save in the lower right and then save as PDF file right here. I click on that. I'm going to name this. So we'll call it sentences. Oops, hang on. You're going to click or tap on OK. And then you, tr you find in the Apple share sheet, you find Google Drive right here in the middle. So if you click on Google Drive or tap on Google Drive, choose your account, and then tap Upload, it's going to save that PDF document to my Google Drive. So let's go back to the Chrome browser and we'll find that in my Google Drive. So we're back in Chrome and look at that, it beat me there. So here it is, it's a PDF of that worksheet called Sentences. And right now I have, uh, as my default PDF reader, I have set up this extension up here. It's called Text Help PDF Reader. The Text Help PDF Reader is a companion tool to the Read and Write for Google Chrome tool. So as long as you have Read and Write, which again is free right now, you can get the other extension called the Text Help PDF Reader and set that up as the default to read PDFs. So now when I open up this uh, worksheet, you can see it's opening up Read and Write. And you'll see an image of that worksheet that I had on my table about two minutes ago. So here's my toolbar. If you're familiar with Read and Write, that should look fairly familiar to you. But now it's using it with this PDF document. Um, so I could use the play button to read everything out loud on here. And then if I wanted to answer these questions or add uh, maybe a drawing or a text box, you can use some of these annotation tools over here. So the T stands for typewriter. That's just like a text box. So this worksheet wants to know if, if these, all these groups of words are sentences or not sentences. So the first one is a small dog. So maybe I want that read out loud first. So I can select it, hit play. A small dog, too. Out loud. The first. Now I'm going to add my typewriter box, a small dog. That's not a complete sentence because it's not a complete thought. So I can use word prediction. I can use dictation to add my answer. We use dictation. Not a sentence. And maybe that's a little bit too big for that line. So I can make it a little bit smaller. Maybe I can make it a nice pink color. And then I can drag it right there on the line, hit the check mark. And now it looks like you typed that right on top of that line in that worksheet. So using that combination of an OCR tool like Voice Dream Scanner and a PDF reading tool like the Text Help PDF Reader which again, it goes hand in hand with read and write for Google Chrome. Um, kids can do those worksheets um, independently. Um, if you are like uh, April's daughter in first grade, she's already getting those PDF documents. She can skip the OCR piece with that app and just open them with this extension inside Google Chrome in order to do those worksheets independently. Okay, next question. Could you please share information about tools to help ELLs in Google Docs and Google Classroom? Some of my kids with dyslexia are also ELLs or English language learners. Um, I'm actually been, and now this is from Ellen P. Ellen, thank you for that question. I've actually been getting that question a lot recently. Um, fortunately, there's some really good tools uh, that have some translation tools built into them that can help you with that. So the first one I wanna show you is co-writer. So we'll go back to co-writer again. So I already have that open from before. Uh, but let's say you have a student who's learning English, has dyslexia, but also is an e English language learner and their original language, their native language was Spanish. So there's a really cool translation tool inside of co-writer. And to turn it on, you come up to the extension, do a right click and click on options. That's gonna open up a new tab for you. We'll give you all the co-writer options. 
And if you scroll down to where it says translate writing into English, we can turn that on and we're gonna choose a language. Let's scroll down and choose Spanish. We got that on. Now I can go back to my Google Doc and you'll notice now there's a little translation option down there in the bottom. Translate writing from Spanish into English. The bottom of my word prediction box. So here's how it's going to work. Um, if your student wants to write the sentence, um, I love to pet the dog, and they can kind of do the best they can with their English I... skills for the first part. So love, maybe they don't have to spell love, they can use the word prediction for that. Love, love. To pet. To pet. The. The. Now they forgot the word for dog. It's saying dog because I did this dog. example earlier, but normally that wouldn't show up right now um, with nothing already typed. But let's say your student who speaks Spanish um, wants to use the word dog, but they forgot the English word for dog. They can go ahead and type it in Spanish, which is P-E-R-R-O, perro. And then if you look down here next to the choice number five, it's done the translation from the Spanish word into the English word. Dog. Then they can click on that. Dog. Inserts it into the sentence, and they can put their period in. I love to pet the dog. So I think that's a really crucial tool for um, teachers, especially who are teaching ELL students um, as they're learning English, but maybe they also have some, some um, other literacy difficulties like dyslexia. Um, and they have difficulty spelling. So again, that's co-writer and that's also free right now. So perfect time for you to check that out. Um, all right, so I do wanna show you that. Next question, let's turn off co-writer for now. This is from Helen A. Uh, my son is entering high school next year and I am concerned with him being able to annotate his textbooks. Can you please talk about ways to integrate reading and note-taking using assistive technology? Okay, well, thank you, Helen, for your question. Helen, this is a perfect example of Bookshare. So definitely have your son, if he doesn't already, uh, definitely get him started with a Bookshare account because he can probably find uh, a good number of his high school textbooks from Bookshare. And then in terms of note-taking on those, those textbooks, what I'm going to recommend is Voice Dream Reader. So we'll come back to my iPad. We'll open Voice Dream Reader. Um, this is not a textbook. This is actually the Call of the Wild. But this is what the text of Call of the Wild from Bookshare might look like in Voice Dream Reader. So Voice Dream, again, has some text-to-speech built in. Um, here's kind of what it sounds like. Buck's first day on the Dio Beach was like a nightmare. Every hour was filled with shock and surprise. He had been suddenly jerked from the heart of civilization. Higher quality text-to-speech voices has that highlighting, but it also has really nice um, annotation tools. So you can do two things. You can either highlight a particular sentence. So you're going to select the text. You'll get a pop-up menu, and you can click highlight. It'll highlight it like you would normally highlight on paper with a particular color. Then you can also add a virtual sticky note. So you would select the word that you want to attach that sticky note to. You'll get a, a pop-up menu. You click note. Okay, this was being a little crazy, cranky with me the other day too because I'm using my little mouse control so you can see what I'm doing, but it's not making it easy for those notes to, to show up. So I'll do it this way with my hand. So let's say I want to add a note, a sticky note to the word safety. I can select it, tap on note, the, the note option. Then you get a little area here to actually type in your notes. And I could use the dictation for this or a word prediction tool, something like that. This is a test note, period. You tap save and it puts a little icon there of a sticky note. When you want to read that, you just tap on it. It opens it up, and it has text-to-speech support as well. This is a test note. So you can go through and annotate a book like that, and then if you just want those 
um, highlights and those notes by themselves somewhere, you can click on this little page button in the upper left and choose export highlights and then move them anywhere you want to. So you could save them into Google Drive as a Google Doc. You can save it in notes on your iPad. If you're a, a Windows user, you can save it to OneNote. So lots of different options there uh, when you're, you're choosing to export those notes. Um, then your son can use those to study later on. So that's just one way of, of doing some note taking. Um, another way, let me just show you this real quick. Let's come back over here. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's say your son is reading. This is not a textbook. Um, oh, actually, I can do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go over to Bookshare. Um, here's uh, Call the Wild again on Bookshare, but this is on the Bookshare web reader, uh, which is in the Chrome browser. Uh, another way of reading Bookshare, you can look that up on their, their website. But to take notes on this text uh, from Bookshare, you can use the Snap and Read tool. So Snap and Read is another Don Johnston tool that's free right now. Let's turn that on. You can see we have some tools over here on the right. Uh, there is text to speech, so we can have this read out loud. After one week of burning the stove at full blast, the cabin at last tried out. Turn that off. You can also open up this little arrow on the bottom, this little note-taking tool or an outlining tool. And what you can do is select text that you want to highlight, click on this little uh, A tool, it's called Capture Text, and it'll move that text over to this little outline over here. Then if you want to use all those selected uh, passages from that book, you can open up your Google Doc again while you have Snap and Read open, and you just drag these passages over to your Google Doc, and you can use them maybe in an essay or in a report, um, something like that. So that's a nice little note-taking tool inside of Snap and Read for um, any, any text that you're using on Chrome, but it works really nicely with books uh, from the Bookshare web reader. All right, I'm gonna take one more question because I don't wanna take up too much time and I know Sonia has a few things she wants to say at the end. Um, so what kind of assistive technologies are helpful for math um, other than a calculator? Uh, so good question, Christi Kristen. Kristen C. Asked, asked that question. We know that kids with dyslexia often have other learning disabilities like dyscalculia or dysgraphia. Um, and sometimes they need assistive technology for that. So in terms of math, there's a couple of iPad tools I want to show you or just make you aware of. One is called ModMath. This is actually very helpful for kids with uh, dysgraphia too. So if your kids have difficulty writing out their math work um, legibly by hand on pieces of paper, you can use an app called ModMath, which is a free tool. Um, it's hard to see on the screen, uh, but there is uh, virtual graph paper on here. Um, so you can select a square and then use the uh, digital keypad to put your answers in. It really helps kids line up their numerals and do their math uh, legibly. Um, and then there's a series of virtual manipulatives called Math Learning Center. So Math Learning Center has all these different apps uh, that can help with different kinds of of, of math, like money pieces can help kids learn how to count money. Uh, so you can drag some manipulatives over. We can set up an equation, maybe 25 cents plus 25 cents. And you can put the equal sign in there and put your answer in afterwards. But now you have this virtual manipulative with these boxes that you can count really helps kids with, with uh, those money concepts. Uh, but there's also one for fractions. Um, there's one for called pattern shapes, geo board that you can use for geometry. Helps kids really understand those math concepts um, in a digital way. All right, so I have, hopefully some of these questions that, that I've answered have been helpful. Um, I wish I had a lot more time to, uh, to answer more questions, um, but I do want to send it back over to uh, Sanja, because I know she does have some things to wrap up, but thank you for your time today. Thank you for tuning in. 
Um, I do want to actually say one more thing. I'm going to give you one more piece of information. Um, this is the website for the NEAT Center. Sandra mentioned that I work for NEAT in Hartford. We have lots of other information there on that website. Um, in particular, we have a section called uh, Learn with NEAT, where we have launched uh, free webinars for the general public. So you can get lots more information there and watch some of those webinars later on. Uh, maybe go more into depth into some of the things I talked about today. Uh, so that this little link is actually included in the download for the AT First Aid Kit as well. So with that, I'm going to send it back over to Sanja so that she can wrap up. Yes, thank you so much, Jamie. That was so helpful. And we're getting a lot of great comments in the Facebook chat about how wonderful this is. And we wish we could have more time. Um, so what I do want to ask, Jamie, your first aid kit, can you tell people how to get that first aid kit again? Sure. I'm going to share my screen again, Sandra. And let's go to back over here. And I'm going to give you the link right here. So you can go to, you can type in bit.ly, all lowercase, forward slash, capital A, capital T, hyphen, and then first hyphen aid. That's all, that's case sensitive if you're typing that in. So make sure you type it in exactly as you see there, or you can use that QR code. Um, but if you're watching this again on YouTube after, just hit the pause button on the recording, um, and then you can take your time when you're finding that. That's gonna give you a copy of the slides with all the other links for you to go off and find more information afterwards. All right, so let me give it back Great. over to you, Sandra. Okay. There you go. Well, again, we just want to thank you, Jamie, for taking time to do this. I know that I'm speaking on behalf of IBA and the entire community that this was a great presentation. Um, very, very helpful. I'm sure that we're going to get more questions, and, uh, and, and it's great. So, again, we just want to thank you. Um, a few other announcements to make. Many of you have contacted us about um, some of these webinars being um, CEUs. Please know that we are working on that. We have not finalized it, but once we finalize everything, we will definitely make sure that you know, um, and then you'll be able to go to our platform, and because you've already seen these webinars, um, be able to apply for CEUs. So stay tuned for that. Again, we will have that announcement come out on our webinar or through our e-blast. Um, one other announcement is to please, again, um, consider giving to the COVID-19 Relief Fund. Uh, many of the software items that Jamie spoke about were free of charge, but um, remember that the Relief Fund could help pay for some of those things if at some point they are not free of charge anymore and you know families or you are a family that need that software and that information and so we want to keep the donations coming so that again we're not turning anyone away with that said um, tune in for the e-blast on this week where we will announce the winners for all of our great prizes and again our next webinar will be may the 11th and we will be talking about instructional strategies so with that said you all be safe um, have a great day and a great rest of the week, and thank you. Have a good day.